Statistics and Excel. Uniform distributions with dice. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. We've got the example, practice blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can get right to the heart of the practice problem. Blank tab, blank worksheet. So we can practice formatting the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's look at the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going as we think about a uniform type distribution using an example of rolling a dice. Now note that the die has six sides, six number on the die. If we thought about rolling the dice an infinite amount of times, which we can imagine to be the entire population, an infinite amount of rolls, we would expect basically a uniform type of distribution. Then we can imagine, well, what if we rolled it a finite amount of times and plotted out the distributions of a finite amount of times of rules, and we can compare that then to uh, the uniform distribution. So that's what we will do. Let's go to the blank tab, and let's first, so we're imagining the dice roll. So remember, there's six sides on the die. So what would be the expected rolls of uh, any number if we were to roll it, let's say, a thousand times. So we're going to say rolls, let's going to say a thousand uh, times. And let's format our cells. Hold on a sec. Let's select the entire worksheet, right click on the cells, and then format them. I'm going to go into the currency, negative numbers bracketed, make them no dollar sign and no decimals and okay i'm also going to make it bold you may not need to but i'm going to work it bold here home tab font group bold so there we have it i'm going to hold down control and scroll in a bit so i'm currently at the 265 percent on the scroll in so i'm going to imagine that we roll it let's roll the die a finite amount of times which is going to be a thousand times as opposed to the population, which would be an infinite amount of times uh, that we can imagine rolling it. And, th and then the outcomes, we're going to imagine any, any one number, the odds on each roll of any one number coming up is going to be equal to one out of six. So there's six numbers on the dice. Let's go ahead and format that number. Uh, let's make it a percent and add some decimals. So six numbers on the dice. Uh, we would expect then a one in six chance on each roll uh, that we, uh, for any one number on the dice. So the expected, let's then say, well, the expected rolls of any number expected rolls of any one number then if i roll it 1000 times and i have uh any one number whether that be a one two three four five or six i would expect how many times for that number to come up well if each roll has a one six chance it would be 1000 times that percent so we'd get uh, 167 about if I add a couple decimals home tab number group a couple decimals uh, 166.66 on uh, forever so that would be what the expected results would be in essence for one number if we rolled it a finite amount of times a thousand times we would expect to see uh, 166.66 you know number ones twos threes and fours now note that this expected result is actually impossible to do, right? Because I can't get an outcome that's not going to be a whole number. So note that we're basically making a model here, a prediction based on, on what we know that we know can't actually happen in real life because I can't get a role that's going to be not a, a whole number. But the model still, of course, useful because we can get... You, you know, we can get the expected outcome uh, with the model. So if I then, let's make a skinny C here. 
And then the headers of our table, I'm gonna say these are the dice numbers, and then I'll tab and say these are gonna be the expected number of rolls. I'll just say expected rolls and enter. I'm gonna format these now by selecting these two up top. We're gonna to go to the home tab, uh, alignment group, wrap the text, and then alignment group and center the text. I'm gonna to go to the font group, bucket drop down, make it black, and then the drop down, make it white. All right, so there we have it. And I'm gonna say the number of rolls is just gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And then we're gonna say, what are the expected outcomes for each of them? Each of them, if we roll them a thousand times, is gonna be, uh, is gonna be, one 166.67 is going to be the expected outcome uh, for each of them. So I'll just say this equals this outcome. And let's say F4, that's going to put an absolute value or dollar sign before the B and the three. And then I'll take that and just copy it down and put my curse in the fill handle, copy that down. There we have it. So the total then that we would expect to have in kind of our perfect world would be equal the sum. And by the way, I'm gonna start using uh, some more keystrokes sometimes. You could hit Alt-Enter uh, here. Let's do that again. Alt-Enter, and then it'll try to sum up what's above it. So notice that keystroke could you know, be a lot faster oftentimes whenever you're using the sum function, Alt-Enter. And so there we have it. And then there, and so there's the thousand rules. That's what we would kind of expect to happen. Let's put an underline here, home tab, font group, and underline it. Let's make this into our kind of format that we've been using. I'm gonna select these items, font group, drop down on the bucket. And if you don't have that blue, it's in this. I'm gonna make it that blue. That's the blue I like. And then font group, drop down, and all borders. We can also make this one a little bit more skinny so that we can just trim this up. Let's do the same over here as well, making that home tab, font group, blue, and bordered. Okay, so there we have that. Now, if we were to plot this, uh, then I, I, can, I can plot this out and just say, okay, well, if I select these items, these two, and I was going to the insert, and I'm gonna use a bar chart to plot this one. So charts, drop down, we're gonna make a, a bar chart, which is, which is gonna look kind of like a histogram. I'm gonna pull this over, right? Because I'm gonna say the numbers I want on the bottom. And I'm gonna close this up a little bit. And so then I need to adjust the data. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say, let's go to the data up top. So I'm in the chart design and then the data and what I want uh, on this side, uh, which is the which is going to be on the y-axis, is just the expected rules. So I don't want this one, or I could I could basically delete this one, delete, and I want the expected rules. And then over here, I'd like to make sure that I have my actual labels, not the ones that they're going to make up. So I'm going to copy these items, and OK. So there we have it. We're going to say OK. And it's picking up the name of expected rules. I don't re really need the legend over here. I could add the names on the side. I could say these are going to be uh, uh, the data labels, right? I could add data labels and say there's the data labels. And then we could also add. Uh, axis titles if we wanted to. So on the axis titles, this is going to be the, uh, the the results. So I could say this equals the expected rules. And on this side, I'm selecting it. I'm just going to say this equals the dice numbers, right? So you can format your chart uh, thusly. And notice sometimes now that I have actually my chart information, I might not even need like like uh, th 